go, going back to some of the songs, right? Um, in your presence, O oh God, right? That's, that's where I belong, right? Or what, what was the other one? Um, let the weight of your glory fall. It says, let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the, the life of your river flow. You know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves the basic questions. Otherwise, we lose sight of where we're going. Like, just a simple question like this. Why do we have the Bible? You know, sometimes we read it. And if we don't ask that basic fundamental question, we can go off in all sorts of directions that aren't right. Right. Why did God give us the Bible? Now, there's a lot of answers to that, obviously. Uh, but I feel like there's one main answer to that. You know, some of the smaller and very correct and very important answers might be uh, so that we know right from wrong, you know, so that uh, we know how to worship God, how to approach God. Um, but I think all of those things point us to this truth that God's desire is to bless and that the word of God, you know, whether it comes through scriptures or, or just through the uh, the revelation of the Spirit, um, which, of course, will always be aligned with the written Word of God. But however the Lord speaks to us, I feel that God's desire is to bless. You know, we just read in Isaiah about how God alone creates, right? He alone is the creator of all things. That's one of the things that separates God from all else, right? Nobody else creates. God alone creates, okay? And just a quick quick but important uh, rabbit trail here. Um, you know, the New Testament makes it clear that Yeshua was involved in creation as well, right? John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1. Somehow uh, the Father and the Son create together, and we see, of course, in Genesis 1 that the Spirit hovered lovingly over the waters, right? We see Father, Son, and Spirit there in creation, but regardless, one God complex in his unity, but one God. And that's how it's determined. That's one of the ways it's determined God from all else, right? There has to be a distinction between God and creation. Otherwise, you might as well throw the Bible out if you don't have that kind of theology, right? And I, I know we do here, right? I'm not, um, not chastising us. I'm just clarifying some things, right? Uh, God is distinct from his creation. God creates. Okay? Right. Bereshi bara Elohim et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz. In the beginning, bara. Now that word bara is almost exclusively used of God alone. Nobody else bara. Nobody else creates out of nothing the way that God creates. Right? God forms things. Humans can form things. We share that with God. But God alone bara, God alone creates. There's a distinction between God and all else. And one of those distinctions is, is that God creates, nobody else creates. And what does the book of Genesis tell us that God created first? He said, let there be what? Let there be light, right? Yehi or vayehi or, let there be light and there was light. Right? That tells us something. Okay? That tells us something. I, I, I don't think that it's just a physical, scientific description of creation there. I think that these words in Genesis 1 have a, uh, a, a deeper meaning than just, well, the first thing he created was light. Okay? Jot that down in my science book and what's next. I, th I think there's something else going on here. That God's creation of light first is that a revelation that God desires to bless, right? God desi That's God's desire is to bless, right? And then we see mankind in our rebellion against God, separating ourselves from the blessing of the creator, right? Apart from the creator, we're not blessed. In the creator, we are blessed, right? The Psalm says, you turned your face, I was dismayed, right? forget what psalm that is off the top of my head, but there's a psalm that talks about, right, in 
in God's light, I'm blessed, but as soon as God turns his face, maybe he's angry at me, I've sinned or whatever. As soon as he turns his face, I'm separated from blessing. Doesn't matter how many good deeds I try to do. It doesn't matter how righteous other people think I am. It doesn't matter how righteous I think I am. I'm only blessed when the only one who creates has his face shining towards me, right? That's where I'm blessed. And apart from that, I have no blessing. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Right? We turn away from that light. We, we fell into darkness. God, God sent the, the flood of the days of Noah. Right, The blessing of creation is being undone. Right, But God keeps desiring to bring that light back in. That's why we have Abraham. Right, You, your descendants, Genesis 12, will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. You know, that's why we have God promising blessing through David, not just to the Jewish people, but to uh, other nations as well. Right. Which is ultimately fulfilled in the greatest son of David, Yeshua, Jesus, our savior. And I think that it's this desire for God to bless, which is why we have the Bible. God wants to get us back in line in our minds, in our lifestyles, in, our, uh, in what we're seeking after so that we are receiving that flow of blessing, right? The, the flow of the river of life, right? Yeshua comes and he offers the Samaritan woman living water, right? Or on the day of uh, Shavuot, the, the great day of Shavuot, the, um, um, I'm sorry, Sukkot, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, Yeshua is there right in the temple courts where all this elaborate stuff is going on one of the most joyous holidays in the jewish year um sukkot the feast of tabernacles and they have that elaborate water drawing ceremony that i've talked about before because they're praying for rain that's the start of the rainy season all right send rain to this day in uh, traditional synagogues there is a prayer for rain that starts on Sukkot, because that's if you don't get the rain in Israel at the rainy season, you're done for because there is no rain over the summer. Right? I've been, you know, I've spent a couple summers in Israel, and it's rare to see a cloud in the sky. You know, you're praying for rain in the midst of that prayer for rain. Yeshua says, and I and I believe that this is still him in the. Uh, in the temple area during Sukkot. Um, he says uh, that he is the water of life, right? He's, th- those who come to him will never thirst, right? He's, he proclaims himself the blessing. You're praying for uh, the rain to come, but I am your blessing. The Bible turns us back to God who is the source of all blessing. If you are living a life where you feel cut off from the life and the blessing of God, the first thing to do is look back to your theology. Lord, I don't feel the blessing that comes, that I, that I feel like I should be getting when I read scripture. I, I, I'm not, I'm feeling lifeless. I'm feeling like all of my acts are just human efforts trying to procure some kind of semblance of righteousness. I'm just just all of this human effort rather than the free flow of your blessing towards me. So the first thing to examine is your theology. Am I thinking about God rightly? Do I understand him as the only creator? Do I understand him as the one I am dependent on for every blessing? Do I understand the blessing of the Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? Am I, am I, do I understand that? Is my theology right? If your theology is wrong on minor issues, you know, that's, that's okay. But on, on big issues, uh, it'll cut you off from the, the blessings of God. You have to have faith in God. Right, and you have to understand God rightly, and you have to understand Messiah rightly, and you have to understand that it's 
from here, from God, that you have your, your blessing. So that's the first thing to examine. I feel lifeless. Well, what do you believe? What do you believe? I feel like I'm trying to get God's attention all the time. Do you understand God rightly that it's his desire to bless, right? That the only way to not get that blessing is actually to go a different path other than what the Bible reveals. Uh, the second thing to consider, if your theology is right on these issues, uh, are you living it? Are you reconnecting with it? How do I know if I'm doing that? Well, what, what's the attitude on the inside? Is it one of, gra you know, gratitude is so pivotal. Well, actually, there's something more foundational than gratitude. You can't have gratitude if you're not first humble. Okay? You cannot be grateful if you're not first humble because the, the, the proud man or woman feels like they're getting what they're owed. Right? I am receiving from God what I am owed. There's no humility in that. I've earned it. I did well. God needs to give me this. You might not say this out loud, but sometimes uh, subconsciously we have this attitude of I'm getting from God what I deserve because I was pretty good. Look how bad these other people are, but I wasn't that bad, right? Or look how I did this right and I did that right. And then all of a sudden you lose your humility and in losing your humility, you lose your ability to be grateful and so every day we have to reconnect with the cross. I am saved, not because I did so much good, but because the Messiah died for my sins. He was the perfect sacrifice, the whole Torah. You know, I, uh, I've been in a lot of conversation with people who are not believers, and, and a lot of them are Jewish. And um, they often talk about, oh, we don't need a sacrifice. We just need repentance and to do the things of the Torah. Well, Torah has chapter after chapter after chapter about sacrifice, you know, it's about sacrifice, right? And yes, doing good deeds, but it actually talks more about sacrifice than repentance. Not, you know, the two aren't mutually exclusive, you know, bring a sacrifice and repent, but uh, sacrifice is foundational to Torah, to the five books of Moses. Sacrifice is foundational to the New Testament. Are you grateful for the sacrifice? Or do all you see is the good works that you're bringing before God and saying, here, accept me? No, we've got to be done with that and accept the sacrifice. We've got to be grateful. Another thing that'll lose your, gra your gratitude is not just... Um, not just pride, but feeling that you're cast away from God, forgetting that there is a sacrifice to bring you back in, right? So every day you've got to connect. You and I have got to connect with the cross every day. My beginning, the beginning of my born again life is at the cross. After that, yes, I might get deeper revelation. I'm going to grow in the Lord. I'm going to do good works, right? This is not a sermon against good works, God forbid, right? We do good works out of gratitude, though, not to earn something. But Lord God, your sacrifice was enough for me. I'd like to go to uh, 2 Corinthians. Just want to end with this. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter five. <clears throat> okay. 
verse 17. Okay, very popular verse. Talked about it before, but let's get let's get back to it, right? Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, if anyone is in Christ, that's it. If you're in Christ, if you're in Messiah, if you're in Yeshua, that's it. Not if you're in Messiah, plus you do a lot of good works. Not if you do a ton of good works, but you're not in Messiah. If you're in him, right? If you're in Messiah. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, this person is a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come, right? That blessing of God restored to you in Messiah. The Bible is here for this, to point you to your need for the Messiah, the ultimate sacrifice, so that in that ultimate sacrifice, God's heart and God's desire to pour out blessing again, just like it was his desire from the beginning, let there be light. He's saying again, let there be light. Let there be a new creation. Notice that? Let there be a new creation. What was I talking about from Genesis 1? Creation. Now there's a new creation. The old creation, we lost our light because of sin. And the new creation, the light, the blessing is restored because of me? No, because of him. And in this I have gratitude. Thank you, Lord God, that in Messiah, light and blessing are restored. And I am in him. And then what? Verse 18, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Messiah, through good works? No. Through being a part of the right synagogue or the right church? No. Because of who your parents are? No. All these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Messiah. It's in Messiah that we're reconciled to God. It's in Messiah that we have the new creation where the light and the blessing are restored. And then, and it's only then, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Right? So yes, there is there's work to be done. Absolutely. There's work to be done. But first, you be reconciled to God in Messiah, and then you... Extend that to others by being, uh, having the ministry of reconciliation yourself. There is no other way, right? Any, any other way will produce um, distance from the blessings of God. It, possibly either hopelessness or pride, one of those two ex extremes. But in Messiah... And I'm going to close with a prayer. If you, normally I open it up for questions and things like that. And I still want to do that, but I want to save that for the other room so we can talk about anything you might have questions or further insights about. So when we dismiss, um, we'll, we'll open this up for discussion. But, but I do want to close this with, with a prayer. Lord God Almighty, we lay it all down for you. Whatever our background, whatever our theology uh, was, whatever our life and our attitude were revealing, Lord God, we, we just lay it all down before your throne, Lord, before, before the altar. And, and we just say, Lord God, I have no righteousness of my own. My blessing, the blessing of new creation, the restoration of light, the reconciliation of me to the Father is only through Yeshua. If anyone is in him, if anyone is in Messiah, in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things are gone. The new has come. All this is from God who through Messiah reconciled us to himself because that was his desire every one of you listening to my voice whether online or here personally and if you don't know messiah you don't know uh the blessing of the father you feel cut off from that flow of blessing just know that it's in messiah that that is given to you and it's his heart it's his desire to give it to you because he is a god of love and all of your sins will be washed away and you will be reconciled to God. And you will be his child. 
and he will give you the strength to turn away from anything that teaches other than what the Bible teaches. He will be your God and you will be his child. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of Messiah. We thank you that on the cross was born our sins, our transgressions, our rebellion against God. On the cross, what humanity apart from God was, was put to death so that a reconciled humanity filled with the spirit of the living God, the recipients of the blessing of the one who created in the beginning might rest fully and powerfully upon us. We rejoice in this and we thank you for it in Yeshua's name.